In this demonstration, I'll be showing you guys how to create a switch file with iSpring Pro. First thing you have to do is open up your PowerPoint presentation, and then after you have everything set up, you will go to publish. Once the publish window is open, you will come over here to the flash output area and select the all-in-one flash file. Uncheck generate HTML and leave full screen playback checked. You also need to uncheck the zip output. Another thing you need to remember is the file name needs to be a short file name. And this is for the sake of just keeping the names condensed in order for either eCollege or any other LMS that you're using to receive the file. Now the presentation title can be as long as you want. So I'm going to go over here and type the name of my presentation, which is the name of the presentation that I have here. The other thing you need to ensure is that you click the customize button and in here you can select the options of what you want to be shown in the final marquee of your presentation. As you can see right now I have thumbnails and notes but this slide doesn't have any notes so I'm going to uncheck notes and as you can see that went away. I'm going to enable the full screen capability, use the system fonts, the timeline, the volume control, next slide, multi-level navigation and I'm going to leave everything else unchecked. Once you have done this you can go ahead and click OK. Now one thing to remember is the first time that you do this once you publish the slides whatever the settings that you had here and customize those settings are going to remain so you don't need to come back here and do this once you have published at least one set of slides. Now, as you can see here, you got four tabs. You got the general tab, the playback and navigation tab, the compression tab, and the advanced tab. Let's go to the playback and navigation tab for a second. This is what allows you to select how you want your slides to play once the student selects the player from either eCollege or if you're using SoftChalk to embed your presentation into SoftChalk. For this one, I'm going to select to start the presentation automatically, to change all the slides automatically, and for the slides to play for a minimum of 8 seconds. This also gives you an option to autoplay on click animations, each for 2 seconds in this case. My presentation doesn't have any animations, but if you had animations, you have to change this to make sure that the animations will play through. If you want the presentation to loop after the presentation goes around one time, make sure you select loop presentation. In this case, I'm going to leave this unchecked. Resume the presentation playback from the last slide view. This comes in handy if you want the students to be able to come back to exactly where they left on the slide deck. Uh, this is also important if you have a big slide set, and I will say more than 20 slides, for them to be able to resume from where they left off. The mouse and keyboard navigation, don't worry about those. Those are checked by default and you should leave those checked. Now let's go to the compression tab. In the compression tab, you can select your image compression. If you have large images, all this is going to do is reduce or enlarge the size of your final presentation. If you're not worried about size, just leave it in high quality because this will give you the better setting for your images. Now the reason why I selected here 800 by 600 is because I'm going to package this as a small file to be able to be viewed in smaller screens. The audio compression, once again, anything above 128 kilobytes or higher is CD quality. So this is really nice audio uh, if you have audio on your slide deck. And the video compression, 600 kilobytes, middle of the road, once again, it's a good setting to have. Now let's go to the advanced tab. In the advanced tab, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in here my resolution 800 by 600 and all of this is automatically filled in for you so I wouldn't worry about it. When you start using iSpring Pro for the first time, you do need to ensure that you select Flash 10 
because it's the latest version of Flash in order for to prevent uh, your presentation from being hacked or disabled. Uh, all of this right here, the detached media content, Flash movies, video clips, audio files, is to create separate files out of your presentation. I wouldn't check none of those. The Flash Player menu, disable the Flash Player menu, leave that check. And then for multimedia objects processing, you should have smooth raster images and advanced smart art processing enable. The enable slide video controls, you should leave that unchecked. Once you have all of this checked and you have all of the settings that I just talked about, go back to the general tab, ensure that you select where you want the presentation to be outputted. In this case, I selected my desktop. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click publish. What iSpring Pro does is it collects the data, it exports the files, and if you have video, it's going to convert the videos. And as you can see, it's generating the switch file. Okay. Once this is done, as you can see here, now I have a very nice uh, flash file that was generated for me. If I click on that file, my presentation is going to play. And as you can see, the presentation is playing in the background. Okay. What I want to do is I want to stop the presentation and I'm going to show you how to embed that presentation in SoftChart. Okay, so now that I show you how to create a switch file in iSpring Pro, I will be showing you how to embed that switch file into a SoftChart lesson and how to embed a video into a SoftChart lesson. The first thing that I will do right after I start SoftChart is to save the lesson. Even if you don't have nothing on the screen, save the lesson and that way you will create the system file for your lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and select my name, and like I said before, use short file names. This will help you to uh, upload the file to eCollege. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Once SoftChuck is uh, finished saving the lesson, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Properties. Then I'm going to go to Style Properties. I'm going to go to Styles, and I'm going to select my style, which is the bottom template that I created for the styles. And then I'm going to go to Title and Layout. I'm going to type the title of my lesson. And I'm going to select the options. The footer, the data was last modified, my license, which is going to be Creative Commons Attribution. I'm going to put Created by Me, my email address, but you can add some extra information there if you want your phone number, etc. As far as navigation, I'm going to select Arrows page numbers. I'm going to disable the print option by just leaving it unchecked and I'm not going to select none of the options in the table of contents. I'm also going to make sure that I select the right sidebar because eCollege already has a left sidebar otherwise it will take too much space in the screen. Once I have all of those options selected I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go ahead and uh, paste some text in here that I previously uh, typed just for the sake of uh, speeding up the process. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that there and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my switch file in here. In order to do that I'm going to go to the insert menu and I'm going to select media. From the media box as you can see here, it's asking you which file type do you want to insert. I'm going to insert a flash file, and I'm going to select my file. And as you can see, my flash file that I created when I was using Nitrogen Pro is here. So I'm going to select that. It's an OS.SWF, which is Swish. And I'm going to hit Select. It shows you down here the path of where that file is being uh, pulled from. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put my resolution in here and like I said before the magic number 800 by 600. Now if you want to make this fully ADA compliant you have to type in here the text of what your presentation is about. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some text that I had already pre-typed in there. That way if uh, any student with a disability get to see my presentation they can see what this presentation is about. Once I have done that, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. 
and as you can see the flash movie placeholder is placed inside of my subject lesson now once I've done that I'm gonna go ahead and hit save as you create your lessons uh, get in the habit of saving after you do something this will avoid from having to lose all of your work if you get to the end of the lesson and you haven't saved it and then you find out that you made an error or your lesson crash okay then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit enter put a couple spaces in there and now that we have our ice cream presentation embedded into the lesson we're gonna go back to the insert menu this time we're gonna select widget once you see the insert widget window comes up you get three options the name, the description, and the widget code. So I'm going to go in here and put the name of my widget. Okay. A description for what that widget is, which in this case is a video. This is what actually makes this widget fully ADA compliant. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and put the embed code in there, or widget code as such I calls it. Once you have all of this set up in here, you're pretty much done. You got your widget. You click OK, and ta-da, watch what happens. Now you got a widget down here. That's really neat. So let's hit Save. And another thing real quick is uh, if you for some reason want to change the widget, you make a mistake, or you want to change how the widget looks, you can always select the widget, right-click on it, and modify widget. And here you can come and change the embed code, the description, or the name. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK on that. Save again. Now let's do a preview in the browser. Now as you can see, you know, when the browser comes up, you got the description for our presentation. Our iSpring Pro presentation automatically came up and started playing just like we set it up in iSpring Pro. Your students also have the option of viewing the thumbnails individually so they can select you know which part of the presentation they want to go to. Now we'll pause this here for a second because I also want to show you that you can navigate forward or you can navigate back in the presentation. Uh, down here if you had audio embedded into the presentation you can use your volume control slider and you can use this here to control the full screen on and off. Okay. Now let's move on to our widget that we just embedded into the lesson. As you can see, the widget marquee is clearly displaying. You see the play button here, and I'm going to mute this here a little bit because this video originally was a little bit loud. I don't want to pop your ears. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and the video start playing automatically. This black bar down here, what's basically doing is it's actually streaming the video down from the internet. When this black bar is completely filled, that means the video was completely downloaded to the system. Another thing your students are able to do from here is control the volume of the presentation, and they can also go full screen, or they can downsize back to the original size of the video as it was embedded into the lesson. Well, this is about do it for my presentation. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if it was something that you didn't quite understood from my video, please don't hesitate. Just call me, email me. You know, I'm friendly and approachable. So thanks for your attention, and have a great day.